Hello neighbor and welcome once again to another edition of Sound Off Louisiana. I'm your host Robert Burns and it is today my distinguished honor and pleasure to have one of the gubernatorial candidates in this fall's election, the election being on October the 12th. And it's my distinct honor and privilege to be able to give, give this interview of Dr. Oscar Omar Dansler. Dr. Dansler, thank you so much for joining us today. You too. And, Glad to uh, have you on the show. I'm very pleased that we could have this opportunity. He has been busy campaigning. I mean, talk about the old way of doing things, going out, shaking hands, meeting face to face. That's what this gentleman has been doing. Uh, we've gotten this opportunity to visit with him for a little while here in Laplace in between rallies. Uh, and we're so appreciative of that fact. I'll give you a quick little couple of bullet points on Dr. Dantzler, and then we'll let him elaborate as to uh, a little of his background and what prompted him to get into this race. Uh, Dr. Dansler has a pretty extensive background in, uh, in police work, and uh, he has served as a police officer. Uh, he has served as a 7th Ward Marshal. Uh, he has uh, graduated from the Homeland Security Emergency Response Team. Uh, he also uh, graduated from, uh, let me see, I'm looking over quickly, a, a, a law school, right? Can you? Criminal not law to school from out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Graduated in criminal uh, criminology. I received and I graduated up under for private investigation, private security out of that particular college. Then I went on attended uh, the Christian Cornerstone College. I graduated from there in the arts, arts biblical study. And then also in the uh, criminal justice degree. And then I went on to receive my doctoral degree. Very good. In theology. Very good. Well, Dr. Danzel, why don't you take an opportunity to give our viewing public an idea of just what prompted you to get in this year's race to be the next governor of the state of Louisiana? Well, first of all, Doc, I'd like to say I'm, I'm kind of dissatisfied uh, with the way the previous governor is running things. Uh, that's one reason. And another reason is that I have a heart that wax coals for the people and a vision from God to share my goals to lead uh, the state of Louisiana into a better future. You know, that's one other goal. And I think that we need someone in there who's going to be for all the people, no matter what type of race and nationality they may be. It's no big eye to use. I am a local down to earth person. I can relate to any human being, a person, without regard to sex, race, and nationality, or religion. So I am the person, I am the chosen one for the people. Very good. Well, you mentioned not being real pleased, as you said, with the prior governor. I would assume that is the current sitting uh, governor. And most people, when they challenge an incumbent, uh, it goes without saying that they can't be overly thrilled if they wouldn't be challenging. So would you care to elaborate as to some of the aspects that that caused you to want to, to pose this challenge of Governor Edwards? Well, you know, um, you know, with a lot of the corruption, I just thought I with the corruption first. We have so much corruption going on in the state of Louisiana too, it's unreal. And you know, you need a governor is that's going to be for all the people, not just some people. Not showing favoritism uh, for this particular friend or family or whoever it may be. If you the governor, you're supposed to be the governor for every individual state of Louisiana citizen. So you make, you're supposed to make sure that every citizen have equal protection of law and due process. And we are not getting that. You know, even if you look at uh, uh, people talking about the, uh, he did pass you know, uh, the bill and got the uh, pay raise for the teacher, mm -hmm. you know. And I look at that as a kind of slap in the face. You know, $1,000, people think that's a lot of money, but that's not a lot of money for a teacher for what they endure. Uh, that averaged out about $75 a month raise. You know, I'm looking at, uh, as your next governor, I want to bring the teacher pay not just the teacher pay, the whole school system. Because I'm talking about, I'm talking about your janitor, your cafeteria worker, your bus driver. We all make up the school system, not just the teacher. I want to bring them up on a national scale, national level, to meet the standard, and then they'd be appreciated and a decent salary. For example, let's just say you're surrounding states. Uh, California, they say if they started their school employees, our teachers, uh, with about $67,000. I'm just throwing a number out. And we down to, say, 45000 
I want to bring those teachers to a national standard somewhere in the ballpark of that $60,000 figure. That's what we're talking about, a raise. And it will be appreciated, you know, to that particular rate because they livelihood, they are educated in our kids, they are our future. And some of these teachers is not actually teaching like they should because they're not getting paid. When you pay someone decent salary, they're going to do an effective job. And we hold them accountable. All right. Well, and, and in fact, with regard to challenging Governor Edwards, uh, this is actually not your first time to challenge a member of the Edwards family. Am I correct? You ran correct, for sheriff. Correct. I in, ran for uh, sheriff. You correct. Ran in 2015. Correct. In, in 2015. And shortly after that race, you filed a federal lawsuit in which you alleged that Daniel Edwards uh, offered you ten thousand dollars to drop out of the race. Correct. So can you elaborate a little bit on that and let us know how that turned out? Yes, sir. Uh, I like to say, you know, uh, they have a lot of what you so called I call them cowards. These are the majority of preachers there around Tampa Parish. And, you know, they're cowards. And a lot of those are taking a lot of money under the table, you know, to do a lot of evil and wrong for doing a thing for a lot of these politicians. It's a shame. We want to stand up for cor against corruption, you know, and I even had ministers. Ministers came up to me that have ties with the Edwards, was the one bringing the money and bringing the thing to me and for making a proposal to me. And what's so kidding about it, Doc, is when, you know, when I'm coming, if I was coming home from work, I had the uh, sheriff department, one of his employees, sitting in my driveway, waiting on me to get in and back my school bus in my yard to get off the bus. And he called me and asked me to come in and sit down and talk you know, with him in his vehicle. And he, he laterated to me and said, look, Doc, uh, the sheriff have offered you $10,000, you know, to get off the race. You know, I said, Doc, I'm in a race to win. I'm not for no foolishness. I don't play games. I don't take bribe. I'm a hardworking young man, you know? He said, Doc, trust me now, you got you got a lot more than it for you if you would take the ten thousand dollars and everything here. Yeah, he showed me the money. Cash money in an envelope. Only thing I have to do was sign a piece of paper. And what, what, what's tremendous about this is in order to get the paperwork that for me to sign to be to drop out of a candidate's race. You only can get that from the clerk of court office. Mm -hmm. And that told me that the clerk of court at that time had to have tied involvement with this type of uh, illegal deal, transaction, or the vote buying and legal bribery. And the sheet that I looked at, my name and everything was already typed in, filled in, and I, I mean, it was the, I mean, I just had to sign the slip. And they was going to bring it back for me to drop out. It was very so important. This was the last day of the dropout. It was the last day of the dropout. And I told him, I said, man, I look, bro, I'm not in it. I'm for the win. I'm standing around. They take the money, take it back to them. I, I don't believe in playing these games. I'm in it to win, you know? And so a little bit further than that, so I contacted the United States FBI. At the time of the director was David Welker. And I sent notification, certified case, certified mail to David Welker and also to the U.S. Attorney, you know, concerning an allegation of the vote buying off and the bribery that occurred to me. And, you know, they have camouflaged my complaint. I don't think that it's right. What do we have justice system for? You know, now, it should be known that David Welker also was a close friend to the Elvises. And, you know, and the chief of police went through FBI Academy, graduated with them. So then whenever the sheriff now had potential balls or uh, big banquets, you know, uh, David Welker was the guest speaker. That was the director of the FBI. So I think that was very uh, conflict of interest. Here we have complaints logged against the certain sheriff department areas and is surrounded. And then our FBI agent is meeting with them and speaking up. For them, I think that's very poorly on the justice system, you know, so by, they would not do anything with my complaint, so I took up on myself. I decided to file a lawsuit uh, into the federal court. 
I did not file into the Federal Eastern District Court because I had ties with federal judges before, and some people have told me that if certain judges get their hands on certain suits that are coming from the police department and the sheriff department, my lawsuit will be in the garbage can. So I had that experience prior. So I decided to file a lawsuit to the highest court, which was the United States District Court, this District of Columbus Federal Court. And when I filed the petition there, the court looked at my petition and stated that I did have grounds for the, uh, to file a, to, uh, to pursue this suit. But they said because the, the action alleged happened in the Eastern District, they sent my suit back down to the New Orleans Eastern District. So therefore, I decided not to prosecute because I knew and I had familiar dealt with federal judges over in New Orleans Eastern District Court. So therefore, my suit is still pending. Nothing happened over, it's still over it's silent right now. But I'm still looking at the new director that have taken place. I'm asking him, if he can see this video, that he will reopen up my case and the complaint that I filed against the Tampa Parish Sheriff Office, not only did I log the complaint, you had several other candidates that ran for sheriff. They also log a complaint of the vote buying and all this type of stuff in the Tampa Parish, you know, area. Very good. Well, and you know, you talked about corruption uh, within the Tangipaho Parish uh, Sheriff's Office, and of course, about a year after that 2015 election. Uh, we have the, you know, the undisputed fact that the FBI came in and they raided Sheriff Daniel Edwards' office, took a number of laptops, computers, things of this nature, uh, and they declared the office to be a, quote, I'm quoting them, crime scene, unquote. So when you saw that, and in particularly a gentleman named Chad Scott uh, that has most recently, as most folks who follow the news know, has uh, just been convicted of uh, some felony charges with regard to uh, drugs and things of that nature. So what were your thoughts as you saw all of these things taking place uh, within that Tangipo Parish Sheriff's Office and, and, the, and the graduates, if you will, or those who went on to, quote, higher, higher ground? Well, Doc, that's a good question that you asked me. I think it's good to put it on the air. You know, this ain't just happened overnight. This has been an ongoing investigation. You had citizens and other deputies and things that had filed complaints about the corruption in Tampa Parish against the drug dealers, the drug pusher, law enforcement involved in the drug. Again, they have certain people in the slotches. Whenever you file your complaint, it's going to be camouflaged. So anytime you file anything into the Eastern District, however, the FBI director, he's take full control over the entire district of the Eastern District of the state of Louisiana. So again, your complaints, when it go, they're being camouflaged. Now, when they came in and raided these individual places, now, it wasn't no coincidence, you know? This been going on. And you ask yourself a question, why is it being silenced? Now, David Welker is no longer our director, so we have a new director now. So why hadn't he, in other words, requested that his agents go back and, and reopen up this investigation if it had been closed by David Welker? You know, so I think it's very interesting that Chad Scott is being convicted who was, had ties to the sheriff department, which is the governor, John Bell Edwards' brother, Daniel Edward, and they in drugs, now and employed with the sheriff department. Now, he ain't the first one. You had other deputies also that doc that was arrested also, that was employed with the tri parish, also had ties with the Temple Parish Sheriff Department, Carl Newman and Samoa. They also was arrested and stuff on math fees and the drug. So now, ask yourself a question. Why would the shell hire all these individually, you know, I mean personally hire them, and they're involved in drugs and being arrested? Now, if that don't raise a red flag, you won't hire a good deputy with experience like me, but you hire everybody just who you to hire is being arrested for drugs. Sometime of nature. Now, these other deputies were allowed to resign, okay? instead of being prosecuted. They have cloaked with authority. I don't think that's right. 
If your son or loved one went to, went to the store and stole a lollipop, they would have arrested him or her and probably executed fully the charges. And here these deputies that worked for the Tampa Parish Sheriff's Office were able to resign without actually, you know, I mean, it, it's a shame. So when you resign, let me explain that to you. That means they can go and get a job at another police department somewhere in another town with recommendation of the sheriff or someone saying they were a good deputy, which being covered up. But if you fire them, that follows them down the road. And again, let's take a picture and look at, uh, we all know uh, the dad drug teacher, uh, they call him Casey. He was our dad drug enforcement for all of the schools in Tampa Parish. He taught drug free in all these schools. Now we have saw the news, the advocate, the commissioner, uh, Ziegelman, constantly posting on the news of the Dow teacher, 24 year veteran employed with the Tampa Parish Sheriff's Office, caught down, according to the newspaper and the news media, down in New Orleans in the crack cocaine house. Now, that's very bad. Now, he didn't even have permission from the sheriff to utilize a state vehicle with the sheriff department drug free stamped on the outside of the vehicle. And not only that the vehicle was stopped by the municipal police officer in New Orleans, he had an inmate driving this damn truck. And again, according to the news and all the website, that the driver of, the, of that vehicle was arrested. Along with he being arrested, they seized book sacks full of drugs, sex retards, sex tools, pills, pumps. Now, again, why would your shell allow this deputy to resign instead of having him arrested and prosecuted to the fullness? Or why had not the superintendent or your local WACP, why didn't they get involved? That was a, a parish issue. Our school kids in high school, who to say that drugs wasn't being given to them or sold to them? So it should have been a red flag. The school system superintendent should have got involved and had asked questions to these high school teachers from the teacher, from the student. You don't let people go undone. You prosecuting all these other innocent kids and people loved ones. What about these deputies and officers who's cloaked with authority? They should be held to the high standard, to more accountability, who know the law. Makes a lot of sense to me. Well, let me ask you this. Um, in, in preparation for coming down for this interview, I told a few people that I was going to come down and interview a gubernatorial candidate, and they, they, they basically told me, well, I haven't heard of him. And, and, in, and we haven't, I'm, I'm leading to, do you intend to push for being included in the debates? And the reason I'm asking that is because usually they'll use a certain level of the polls in order to qualify for the debates. And Bernie Pence and I just put out a poll where your name was not convenient, it was conveniently not even placed on for a choice for the, the polls. So we're, gonna, we, we're, we're hopeful very, in the very near coming days to have some more guests that can elaborate on this further. But would you care to elaborate at this point? Do you think there is a concerted effort to basically uh, try to quash the fact that you're even out here running, uh, and and I'll let you. Yes, sir. I would say that is the game plan of the enemies of the other candidates out there. You know, I don't have the money to push. I'm not being bad by political machines. I owe no uh, political favor to anyone. You know, so now. You have a lot of money being pushed from your incumbent and all the other Republican candidates. Now, I wish to show you, I won't call a name, but I can assure you it's one of the candidates that who have paid highly, highly money to make sure that I be concealed from the public. Now, I have notified numerous of your local radio station, 
your TV broadcasting. They refuse to contact me. They refuse to appetize me. So again, they are trying to keep me from being seen so I can show up low rates where they can disregard me in the poll where I won't be admitted to be allowed in these debates. I think that's really racial motivated. As the only black African-American candidate in this race, I think that I should have been visibility. Not only that, when I uh, uh, went to the Secretary of State, when I qualified, I approached, it had at least, I think, six, six whites, news reporters there, table set up the whole nine yards. So I, esc I was escorted further in. They talked to me, got me to sign papers, warrants, affidavit. So when I come out, they had me to stop. If you log in on my Facebook page, Oscar Omar Dantzler, and I can show the photo, they have me on the podium, the camera was on me, they had me stop at least 30 to 45 minutes, well interviewed me, questioned me. I even issued flyers to each one of those reporters. Now, and now, when the newspaper come out the next day from the advocate paper and when I looked at it and I read it, I said, wait a minute. My name was not even much included as a candidate when these new reporters was present at the time that I qualified. They questioned me. They took pictures of me on the podium. So then I looked and I said, wait, let me see who wrote this. I say, this the same, this the same editor, uh, writer, reporter here that gave me her card. So I have the card to match the writing of the script. And y'all can see that I can show y'all later that she did not even include my name as a candidate. But here she issued me her card with her name on it as a reporter. And I think that's very bad. And I think that they doing everything in their power. But through God, all things is possible. We've been out constantly beating the bushes. I've been out to, throughout parishes, meeting with pastors, bishops, doctors, and a whole lot more people, you know, out there supporting me and they bagging me. Uh, they giving me 100% of uh, their support. And let me tell y'all something. Let me share this. The Democratic Party is a big joke out there. They are sellouts. They endorse wrong candidates because they are taking payoffs. Now, one Democratic Party in Baton Rouge went against their own bylaws, rules and regulation. They endorsed the incumbent to John Bell Edward before qualifying period was over. Now, do y'all think that was fair? Y'all yeah, yeah, view it. Do y'all think that was fair? They at least supposed to wait it until all the other candidates have qualified. Well, you know, John Bell Edward, he knew I qualified. I'm a candidate from his parish. I introduced that I was going to run for governor. So he saw the introduction of my news article there or whatever. So he knew that I was going to be running against him. Now, the policy also addresses once you have two Democratic parties, they are not to endorse no Democratic candidate. But however, they can't endorse individually. So after I was qualified, they should have redirect. They should have re or undone the wrong what they have done and say, we're not going to make no endorsement. We have another candidate. Also, when I showed up down in Baton Rouge, they did not want to acknowledge me as a governing candidate. They didn't want me to speak at all. They didn't want me to acknowledge. But thank God to Mrs. Belinda Wood Brown. She also served on the executive Democratic. She cut up. She made nod. She said it ain't right. She said this fool is going to stop here today. She met with the people there, the president, and so happened. And finally, they let me spoke. And I spoke about the concerns of the parents that I want to do for the state of Louisiana. And I thank Ms. Belinda Wood Brown for standing up to making a difference in our community. But think about this here. I also went to Morgan City. I was issued a letter 
by mail that I had to submit if I want to be into the parade and everything. So I submitted all my paperwork back. I had to pay a fee. I paid $700 to enter into this parade in Morgan City Festival, me and my supporters. Now, plus we would issue numbers and everything to put in our windshield as we was in lineup. And when I arrived there with my float and my team, I had to meet the person there. They signed me in in the lineup, told me where to get, where to go. And I had my paper. I saw the elk was uh, on the bandwagon was there. So I want to say this, go ahead. So after long, we went down through the parade and we was going. No one in the Morgan City area knew that IEMA was running. That's a shame, people. That is a shame. But once they saw the signs, they was coming up shaking my hand. They was telling me, we have a black African American running for government. We have another choice. We can vote for somebody else that's a Democrat. We didn't know he was running. So it was told me that people was videoing me and taking pictures. Plus, they had the Africa and other news reporters with their TV. When they saw me approaching, they took the cameras and or they took the cameras and shut the cameras towards the ground. They refused to take my picture or photo at all. We saw them. We personally saw they would not take my picture or photo. And I think that was very wrong. That showed very racial, you know, against me. You know, as being the only black African American that's running as a Democrat also that's in the race. So later on, we went on through the rain. I was done enjoying myself, getting off the floor, shaking hands, meeting people. They was glad to see that they had another candidate was running. We enjoyed ourselves, went on and enjoyed ourselves to the festival. So we would come on back to home and later on, my brother emailed me the link. He said, you need to look at this. The, the news reporter there, they posted on Facebook and the news. They did not list me at all as a candidate for the state of Louisiana governor. In other words, no acknowledgement of my name or even I was present there at the time of uh, John Bell Edward. They mentioned John Bell Edward. They mentioned our response, couldn't make it, so he was at church. So this is a shame, people. Why are they camouflaging me? Are they scared that I stand a chance of winning uh, this election for the governor? I think we need changes. I think we need more righteous people to get off the tail and stand up against this injustice. I'm asking the people to get out and share this video do YouTube, do Twitter, whatever network. I need your support. I'm begging. I'm urging you all like Apostle Paul. I'm urging you all. I'm begging for you all support. Help me to bring a different for our state of Louisiana. Thank you. So let's take just a few moments, Dr. Danzler, if you don't mind, uh, to cover a few of the issues that you feel are the most pressing, the most important in your campaign. I noticed one of them, you've gone out of your way. We're going to supply you a, uh, we're going to provide a direct link for the flyer, which Dr. Danzler has mentioned on several occasions, so that you can review, number one, his credentials, and number two, his stands on a number of issues, uh, one of which you are going out of your way to make sure that folks know that you are pro-choice. Am I right? Yes, I am pro-choice. You know, and I think it was very bad and poor in the era uh, for the governor to sign a pro-life bill. You know, as a governor, I don't think no man or no governor in the vision of the state of Louisiana should be able to file and sign a bill restricting the rights of a female, violating a federal constitutional right. I think that was very poor. I'm pro-choice. I think that's a woman's right to decide on what she should be able to do with her body. However, you know, I do have a session. I am pro, I'm pro-life, but I'm 100% pro-choice. I think that if a, a woman uh, got raped, I have a exception. I think she should be allowed to have an abortion. I don't think she should be able to live all her life turmoil and thinking how this child uh, where it was developed, well, concede. So now, again, we go back and talk. We have what we call, they call it the after pill sex. 
So if they will go and take after pill, after this occurred when they go to the mouth, so a child heartbeat uh, if they have not developed yet. I think it's between six to nine weeks before a heartbeat is begin, life. So again, it's no life yet. So again, I don't think no woman is doing anything wrong because a life have not, a heartbeat have not, a word, been established yet. So I support that. And the second one I, I support, if, if it's between the same, the life of the mother, I think, yeah, then they should take that baby to save the life of the mother, or vice versa. So I am in exception to that. Again, I'm support of pro-choice. Now, and look at uh, our uh, uh, justice system. I think it's bad. We need reform. That's one of my goals in our justice system. Um, look how the jails are overcrowded. We have what you call non-violent criminals that's locked up for no reason at all. My form, my reform is the plan to help allocate money, funding back into our state. With the Dancer Reform Plan, I want to look at our non-violent uh, criminals. Why can't we let them back out at home on work release, give them a job, let them work through restitution, pay off their debt? Okay, now, I want y'all to understand this. Plus, they home with their family. They also helping raise those young males that's going astray now without the father figure. Okay, not only that, let's look at in 2014 the salary was started from $31,000. I think it's up to $60,000 now per year. That's to house one inmate. Now, what can Dr. Dansler as your next governor do with $55,000 of that a year per inmate. I want to bring that back into our funding. That will open up more job opportunity, pay raises, etc. So again, I have a plan. If y'all give me an opportunity to bring this plan into focus. Look at the killing, the brutality that's going on and surrounding our state with the law. Again, I want to make sure as your next governor that I want to hold these law enforcement accountability. I want to hold them accountable if they brutality to your loved one or they shoot and kill your loved one without just call. This is an injustice throughout the state of Louisiana, like the Sterling case. <coughs> like the Sterling case went down. That was murder. Those officer should have been brought to justice. And again, Umpha was right. I stand against its justice. Now, look at, <coughs> excuse me, they passed recently the marijuana bill. It's other words, now it's legal if the doctor prescribes it for you. That's a good, that's a good question and a good topic. As your next governor, I would do everything in my power to pass a bill to legalize marijuana for personal use and recreation because it is the injustice up on all of our youth of all race today are being incarcerated on misdemeanor charges for no reason at all. Now, why couldn't we issue them a little citation? But look at it. Just to, I want to come out to say, but I also own Bell Bonder Company, Doc. Okay. So that's why I want to go in. <laughs> I burn out so many of your loved ones throughout the week for a little bit of junk. Or were affecting their career. College student. Come on, y'all. This is a shame. God has given us an herb for a medical reason. Why punish our young one? in a criminal justice system to ruin their career. Our jail cells are overcrowded with these type of young people that are they because of smoking marijuana. This is injustice, y'all. This is totally against me, against the moral of God, 
Why have a law and put it against your people that make up the Constitution and the citizens of the state of Louisiana? This is wrong, y'all. Now, and the new law that they come out with, <clears throat> if you have four individuals in a car and the police officer stopped the driver and they found a little bit of just a little roach in the car, guess what? All four of those college students are going to be arrested. And that's a shame, y'all. What, what, what kind of justice system do we have? We don't have discretion no, no more. When I was law enforcement, our rule book said it was left up to the office of discretion. So it's not all the time that we need to put handcuffs and shackles on someone. Why can't we give them verbal warning sometime? Or why couldn't we issue them a citation? Not just throwing handcuffs, putting someone in jail, messing their career, especially if they're going to college, to better their education. Come on, you all. Let's wake up. It's time for change. I need your vote. Vote number two for Dr. Oscar Omar Dantzler on October 12th for your next governor if you want the justice system to be reformed. Thank you again, Dr. Dantzler. You're welcome. Pleasure having you on. And I want to also add some more of my other platform goals. And we look at, I want to make sure that our senior citizens, our veterans are not left behind. It's been well overdue. We have what you call expansion uh, plan. That, that, that's good in this place. But you hadn't heard of the Downsler plan. The Downsler plan is, I say this here, our senior citizen, our veterans, they have paved the way for us, for you and I. I wouldn't be here today standing up speaking to you, receiving education, knowledge, if it had not been for our senior citizen. This is my plan. Once the senior citizens have reached the age of 65, I want them with a card that's going to pay for medical bill visit and full medical prescription. Not no copay. They have paved the way for us. Come on, people. Let them reap the fruit of their labor. Now, look at the salary they make that they get and earn. It's a shame. I don't know a pay raise yet I heard of that our senior citizens have had since decades. I want to overhaul that. Also, I think that the overhaul is needed. I want to bring a bill to bring in more money for our senior citizens to upgrade for their salary. I think that our senior citizens will feel really good about themselves if they once a month that they can take their grandkids out at least to go to Corral and enjoy one decent meal a month from the fruit of their labor. Come on, y'all. Let's wake up. This is the downstream plan. Look at our veterans that went out there and fought and died for our country. To make, in other words, the state of Louisiana, the United States of America, and what it is today. And look how our, our veterans are being treated, you all. I want to change that. You see, some of them living and sleeping under the bridge, y'all. That's a shame. That's a disgrace. What happened to the housing? Why we can't have housing or medical to assist our veterans? They paid the way for us. It's a shame to say we love God. I'm talking about leadership, pastors, bishops, whatever you want to call yourself. Why we are not opening the doors up, trying to rehabilitate our elderly, our senior citizens, our veterans. This is the Dashler plan. Again, I need your support. And before I go off on this specific section, I want to share with you all, please go on my Facebook page, Oscar Omar Dashler, and share and see a lot of my TV commercials, my radio broadcasting, and a lot of my footwork that all these parishes that I've been going to and visit. Because the local television stations, they refuse to play 
my TV commercials, and radio. So again, please join in. And I do need support. If you able to help me financially, log in on Oscar Omar Downsler 44 governorcom We have a PayPal account, or you can make it out right to the bank account, Downsler Campaign. So again, I need the support to help me win this election and to bring the state of Louisiana into a better future. Well, once again, we couldn't be more happy to have you given us the honor of visiting with you, Dr. Danson. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Okay. Again, let me bring another one of my, one of my goals of platforms here. You know, our medical staff, our firefighters, our law enforcement, they are our livelihood every day in the community. In other words, taking care and protecting us. I'm strongly in support of a pay raise. Hello, somebody. I think that our people here deserve a pay raise. I word, let them reap the fruit of their labor. Most police officers, and they are working two or three jobs to make in me detail. I don't want that. I want our law enforcement, I want their salary farming, and man, I want them on a national level scale with Chicago, these other surrounding states, where they can be at home more with their family, enjoying their family. We know we need police officers, we need firemen, we need to hire more. Stop overworking our police officers, our firefighters. Let's open up more job opportunities. That's some of my goals. Open up more job. I'm for more job opportunity. That's what I'm for. Let's again, let's move forward. Our state of Louisiana, elect me as your next governor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vansley. And again, <laughs> let me move again a little bit another one of my goals. I'm strongly supporting economic development. I think that I want to, as your next governor, I want to do whatever in my power. If you have any kind of mindset, attention, and want to start a business, I want you to be able to come to me whatever I'm able to do. I want to have an open door policy. I want you to understand that too. As your next governor, in other words, the mansion will not belong to Dantzler. It belongs to the people, the citizens of the state of Louisiana. So again, my door will be open to ears to hear what you have to say. And anyone that have a vision that want to try to open up small businesses, I want to do it up in my power. If it's able to try to utilize writing grants, I want to do that. I'm going to seek every grant as possible to try to help rebuild the state of Louisiana, especially for our tornadoes, the hurricane, our roadway, etc. I think that we need some type of funding to be already in place. We don't want to wait till hurricane today to hit here. We need something in place, so we need help. We should maybe can write a check or something and put you in a motel, hotel, or something. That's my goal. Now, again, I want to work with the local bankers here in the state of Louisiana. Now, I want you to understand something. Our banks here, our bankers, they work for us. We put our money in these banks. So if these bankers don't want to loan us money, don't want to loan you money to help you to get a small business start, then we need to stop banking with these banks. Because our word, the Bible teaches me, love starts first at home. Then it spreads abroad. I'm your governor to be. I want to be the here and the right man for you. What you don't know, I want to help you know about it. That's my goal. I want to work with you to open up small businesses. The doors will be open for you. Anything that I can do, we want to work with you to assist you. Thank you so much again. Vote for me, number two, on October the 19th, October the 12th, 2019, for your next governor. Thank you. You know, Dr. Dan, so I want to follow up about this business, about whether or not you're going to be included in debates. Uh, there is a debate happening three days from the day we're filming this. Uh, today is Monday, September 16th. There will be a debate out at LSU 
Uh, have you made an attempt to be included in that debate? And if so, what's been your response? Yes, uh, I, <clears throat> I tried to contact, in fact, I tried to contact uh, actually a guy who was over, I guess, the news of the debate. Uh, he yet to return my phone call back, so I took on myself some, some other candidate called me and asked me was I aware of this debate, and I had told him that I, I wasn't aware of it. He said, well, there's going to be a debate going on at LSU, and you need to be there. So when I kind of looked at it, then I got paperwork, then I immediately, I signed the paperwork and I wrote a statement on the paperwork advising them that I think it was racial motivated. As a black African American, I think I'm being singled out. I think as a governor candidate, no matter what race you may be, as a qualified candidate, I think that every government, other than every governor that's qualified, should be also involved in the debate and let the citizens at the state of Louisiana uh, make that decision. Not these big type payoff on the table paying these producer TV uh, people to shut people down at the polls and stuff. I think that's wrong. And I request, I email the copy, letting them know that I will show up at that debate. I'm planning on attending that debate. They have shut me off of every debate that they have been having. They have shut me down. Not even showing me on the poll. So what would that tell the public? I can't get a percentage. That's injustice. I think, and I thought that we was way from that, from the legacy of Dr. King, Rosie Park, all of our civil rights, ancestors died for the freedom to fight for us to make it, or make it better now today. And we still have these kind of people that showing the racial slurs and the camouflage and the concealing of a black African American. It needs to be stopped, people, today. I'm asking you, help me to bring this change, not just me, it may have another candidate next year can run for certain offers. Y'all want the same thing that happened to y'all son, y'all daughter, or y'all loved one? Help me break the yoke today. Let's stop this kind of stuff from going on today. Share this page. Contact the people that's involved in this video, especially the producer. Go live with him. If y'all think this is a shame, I should be allowed. Other candidates should be allowed in the debate. I think y'all need to go live and let the people know in the test it's wrong what they have been doing me and it's wrong what they continue to do, to do me. Well, you've mentioned that you'll be at the date. We'll make the commitment that we will also be at the debate to see about them allowing you to participate and, and view any reaction there may be, whether it be inside the facility, outside, or whatever. Because, as you just pointed out, if your name's not even going to be put on the poll, then it's going to automatically be zero. It's going to be zero. And, and Bernie Pinson had just released a poll that for whatever reason, he chose not to put this gentleman's name as an option. You can't just arbitrarily say, well, you know, uh, whether it be a, a candidate-sponsored poll or not, you can't just arbitrarily say, well, I wish he wasn't on the ballot on October 12th, so I'm not going to put him on my poll. Well, then we have no accurate gauge of what the level of interest in Dr. Dantzler's candidacy may be. Therefore, if you're going to take that approach, this is me speaking personally, you ought to invite to the debate because you, ha you weren't willing to put his name out there to see what the level of support was so that you could have then said, well, it's too low. If it's if, if he's not, not on the ballot, it's automatically zero. My opinion, speaking as Robert Burns, that ought to qualify him for the debate. And again, I thank you, Mr. Byrne, because, you know, just like you, a lot of viewers out there who was looking at this, who are going to be watching this. So y'all get to see for y'all self the, uh, the injustice that they had placed upon me. In other words, I'm fighting with my hands tied, with handcuffs behind my back. Do y'all think that's fair? Like again, I want you to place yourself as a candidate or one of your loved ones may decide to run for president. Do you all think it would be fair to shut him or her off at the poll or give them an opportunity to, to be heard? And that's your 14th Amendment Federal Constitution right. Equal due process. At least give us the opportunity to be heard. That's all I'm asking. And if you don't want to vote for me, that's fine. 
But don't single me out. What you scared that I stand a chance? To me, that's what I strongly believe, you know, as a candidate for the people and have the mindset and being a minister, a pastor, a man led by God to bring about the change and the goal to bring in our better community and for the state of Louisiana, this is what we need. We need a fear, fear in God man that fear God. It's not being bagged by no political machine, have not taken no type of contribution for no type of political machine. So again, I hold no type of political favor. I could go in there and make the right decisions, bring it on the right people to help me bring this change to move the state of Louisiana into a better future. Well, and speaking again on behalf of myself, I look forward to you being in that debate in three nights and uh, responding to the, the questions that are posed in that debate. Uh, now let me just ask you this, you, you have uh, uh, wanted to articulate your thoughts about term limits, am I correct? Yes sir, Go yes ahead sir. And take the floor on okay. your thoughts on term limits. I'm strong in support of term limits, that's one of my goals as elected as your next governor. I think if the United States president, if the state of Louisiana governor can only serve two terms, what about every other elected official? In other words, let me break it down. I think we need new movement. I think we need new motivation. And I think we need new ideals. Break, I'm gonna break this down. You have the sheriff department. They keep running. They can run for life. I think that's wrong. Again, when I ran against 2015, I was trying to bring a chain with the Temple Perry Sheriff. I think now he has been off over 20 something years. And people, y'all don't think it's time for changes? We need new people, new motivation, new idea. Look at all the corruption that you have heard that Mr. Byrne talked about. I can assure you, if you'd have had a new sheriff, he could have went in there and reinvestigated, opened up cases that this particular sheriff is concealing and won't other words prosecute. That's why, again, I'm for term limit. I think that every position should have a term limit, so give every person a right to be able to run, not to stay in the seat for life, and have a good old boy system. Uh, and I think your point is well taken because there's another uh, blogger, his name is Tom Aswell, and he has just put out a book uh, that details extensively in almost every parish of the state the corruption of Louisiana sheriffs. And we're going to give you a link if you'd like. To. I, have, I have read the book. You're welcome to go and take a look at the book to back up exactly what he says. And I'd like to make one other point. You can feel free to comment on it. Jeffrey Sally was most recently came down here from New Jersey to head the FBI's office in New Orleans. And he made that point that one of the reasons that corruption is so rampant in Louisiana is the dynasties that tend to blossom in sheriff's offices across the state. And with term limits, at least, whether it be two, uh, two four-year terms or maybe even three, four-year terms, at least at some point, you, you're guaranteed to get a fresh set of eyes to come in and look. So I think there's, I think there's some adequate, uh, big, big, uh, powerful folk that have agreed with your sentiments with regard to term limits for sheriffs. Correct. And that's, again, that's another thing. As our incumbent to governor, you know, he should be strongly want to support term limit. But he's not going to do it because he's in a partnership political with the sheriff in the surrounding states that support him, especially his brother as being one of the sheriffs in Tampa Parish in which, don't forget, that the local FBI have raided twice, two times. Now, if you'd have had another sheriff being reelected right now, I can assure you, you will have deputies coming forward giving testimony on the corruption of the prior sheriff. They are not going to come forward because he's still the commander chief. They scared of their job. This is why you need term limit. Free the people. Set the change free. All right. Well, you have any other issue? I believe you had one other. You said you wanted yes, to sir. take the floor. Uh, you know, we talked about the taxes and, and stuff like that. I want to lower our taxes. Not only lower the taxes, I want to also bring a bill in to suspend all grocery taxes. And now, if that won't help the citizens or the people of the state of Louisiana, you tell me what will. As a hard-working person myself owning three businesses, 
I get tired of paying $100, $200 taxes when I go make groceries. Hello, somebody. So I think that we need a tax break, huh? So again, if you elect me to be your next governor, I'm for all the people, low down to earth person. I can relate to any individual person, no matter what the creed may be. I'm the person to be in the next driver's seat as your next governor, being led by God with the vision and goals shared and to be produced from the people and to the people to be effectively to move the state of Louisiana into a better future. Again, I cannot do it except your support. I need your vote, your phone call, your Twitter push button, your YouTube push button, your Facebook push button. I need you all to help me to bring about this change in the state of Louisiana. And one other as I close, I want to look and see, I want to bring on these jobs. Minimum wage, I want to see what I can do to bring minimum wages up to another standard. I think minimum wage is too low right now. Our college students work hard. Going to college, they don't really make enough to pay for their tuition, help assist with books. Again, I talked earlier but I think that if our loved one is going to college here, why should they have to leave and go to an out of state and get a job and bring the revenue to that other state when they can bring the revenues to us, state of Louisiana, to help produce more jobs, more job opportunity pay raising. This is all I'm saying. Make the right choice. Vote number two. Dr. Oscar Omar Dantzler on October the 12th, 2019, let me serve as your next governor for the state of Louisiana. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Dr. Dantzler, it was a very interesting pleasure to have you on today. We're going to look to have a second segment. Dr. Dantzler has some national figures that have, have come in. We're going to look to have a second segment uh, in which we get to hear from them. Uh, and there are going to be a few events that he has in graciously invited us to that we intend to attend, most certainly. And uh, Dr. Dantzler, again, I want to thank you for allowing us the privilege of coming in and, and getting to interrupt your busy campaign schedule and get some of your thoughts that were very much appreciated and, and we appreciate the time you took out with us today to do so. Thank you so much. You're, You're glad right. to be here. Anytime I may be a servant to help to try to stop some of this corruption, this exposure, I'm here. Very good. We want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in. I think you would have to agree. We've had probably our most interesting guest thus far of the Sound Off Louisiana series. So this is Robert Burns thanking you once again for tuning in to today's episode. And we look forward to seeing you again in our next Sound Off feature. Thank you so much.